Good morning, Kenny. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I feel blessed only because I've waited a lifetime to share a conversation with you. I mean, I, I think in my own bedroom, I must have spun I Like Dreaming four million times. Jeez. That's, that's incredible. For you to be a part of music history in the way that you've been, I mean, I can't imagine what we don't know about you because, you know, so many people, you know, especially radio disc jockeys, we, we know the artists that we're playing, but we never talk about the songwriters. And you had such a major part of that. Yeah. Uh, that's how it all started for me. Uh, I had written a, no, a number of hits before I became an artist and, I got I signed 20th with Russ Reagan back then, and uh, my first release was I Like Dreaming, and uh, I flew back east to, to meet with the, the guy that co-produced with me, Charlie Colello, and I said, Charlie, I hear this a lot like My Eyes Adored You, yeah. which I, I wrote, and he did a uh, he did the uh, the arrangement on. And um, Charlie, uh, he really clicked on it. Uh, it became the record that it is today. I like dreaming, and um, you know, I, I I I start songs in a different kind of a, a way than most people do. I never start with a melody. I start with a title, uh, and the title somehow grabs I grab onto some sort of a melody and it goes from there so I had this, this title I like dreaming and I pick up a guitar and I'm strumming it and I go I like dreaming the stream it can make you mine and that was it it's so funny that you start with a title and because as a writer I I don't start with titles because I'm always afraid that people will judge a title like they judge a book <laughs> right well it seems to come to me the same way every single time. I've just, I'm, I'm working on another, a new album right now, an, an album of inspiring, inspirational songs that are some of the best songs I've ever written. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to uh, some of these these new songs because I think they're gonna they're gonna make a lot of people happy. So, in essence, uh, when you when you say you're you're writing brand new music, I mean you're you're telling us as listeners that you still like dreaming. I do absolutely, and uh, the follow up was a hit called "Love's Grown Deep." Yes, um, and uh, there, you know, there that album just uh, I guess they just put it out. Uh, Star Vista Music. And um, then my second album is coming out this month also, uh, at the end of this month, called A Song Between Us. Um, but back to the writing. Uh, uh, and I, I have to talk about my, my partner at the time, Bob Crew. He was a terrific, terrific writer. Uh, do, you, you, do you remember his name? I do remember his name only because back in my early days of radio, when it came to ASCAP BMI, we had to write down the the, the, uh, the songwriters on that, that long sheet of paper. That's the only way I know his name. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, uh, he produced most of the four seasons, yeah. and he produced uh, Frankie Valley. Yes. And uh, how that song started was, I have gone to uh, the library in 75 or four. Do you recall, if you recall, there were a slew of uh, records with Georgia in the name. Yes. The Midnight Train of Georgia, <laughs> The Night the Lights Went Out. Yeah. Okay, so I, I pick up a, a my guitar again and I'm singing a song Blue Eyes in Georgia Honest to God and it goes Blue Eyes in Georgia they're the only eyes I ever loved 
and I'm sitting that I take it and I'm sitting on the piano bench with Frankie Valley and I go so listen to this Frankie and I made a mistake and said instead of blue eyes in Georgia my eyes are Georgia <laughs> 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 and that, that's how that happened. That's a classic. <laughs> Kenny, those are the songs that Casey Kasem used to talk about. I mean, they, that's that's the one thing that I miss so much about about modern day radio is I don't have that Casey vibe because I remember when Casey would would announce, "I like you know, I like dreaming," and it just it forever stays inside your heart when you hear those songs. Yes, I also I think I told you I wrote the Atlantic Star hit masterpiece and. Um, I wrote, remember Tavares, uh, A Penny for Your Thoughts, Nick for a Kiss. Uh, and, you know, a lot of R&B songs as well. The Deal, Baby Face, uh, Shoot 'em Up Movies, um, on and on. Wow, to create with Babyface, because Babyface is and was such a powerhouse, you know, I mean, everything about him in the 1990s was just like, this is the new sound of music, the new sound of R&B. 86 back in 87, 88, and they heard a demo that I did on Bang Bang Gotcha. Yeah. Movie. Remember that? Yes. Uh, and they, they said that's it. And uh, they did it, and it became a, a big uh, R&B hit, top five. Um, and also crossed over uh, pop as well and uh, that's how that happened um, and what else is it There's a lot of things come to mind so but uh, that's you know so I've written you know a, a pretty large array of different kinds of songs um, I know I'm leaving something out Lady Marmalade, that's what you're leaving out so far. I can't wait to talk about that one. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's just unbelievable, that song. <laughs> it, I did, we didn't talk about that yet, did we? No, we did not, sir. Okay. Uh, 1974-75, on the side of tour buses, of buses that you know brought people around the, the city was a, uh, a, a a promotional thing called Get Your Yaya's Out Rolling Stones Tour 1974 Get Your Yaya's Out and it was all over the city on, on the sides of buses and uh that stayed with me, get your yaya's out. They, they refer to it differently. Uh, uh, you know, get high, get crazy, jump up and down. And um, I just took it to, to be to be a, a sexual thing, as somebody would say, get your yaya's out. <laughs> so I, I changed it to get your yaya gaga and put it in New Orleans with a prostitute saying, hey, get you, get you, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. And wound up calling it Lady Marmalade. And um, it's the, the rest of history, I guess. But, you know, it, 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 it's been number one three times by three separate artists. And it's the lead song right now in Moulin Rouge. Yes. All over the world. And um, that's how that song happened. And it, and it took, I must, I must say, my version of it, which is on the 11th hour. I was the lead singer on 20th hour for the 11th hour. Uh, I did the original Lady Marmalade. And then, you know Alan Toussaint? Mm hmm. Remember his name? Absolutely. A great, great, yeah, he's a genius. He got a hold of it. And he turned it into the LaBelle record. And everything, like, when that, that record came out, it's like crazy. <laughs> People went nuts with it. And then it became, 
And then it's been it's been in so many movies. And it was number one again in 2001, but in Moulin Rouge, Christine Aguilera, yep. Maya Little Kim and Sink. And then it was number one by a group called All Things. Do you remember them? No, I've not heard that version. Okay, All Saints was uh, an English group. And it was number one to all throughout the international world as well. It wasn't number one here, but it was number one in Europe and uh, Britain, uh, their ver- their version. So it's, it's a, a, an amazing copyright, and it's a, a something that... I had to be in it, in that craziness, in that time, to obviously be, to be able to come up, come up with something like that. It just blows me away to see how in touch you are with everything around you and how you can take something from the Rolling Stones or you can sit there with, with Frankie Valli and, and you, you have a slip up, but you turn it into a hit. It's, it's like you, you don't let anything get in your way when it comes to writing music. No, I don't. Uh, that's why I have a, ca- a, a large catalog. So, um, you know, I, I just love, I live to write music, I live to, to record, and I live to, I live for my family. Yeah. Don't you think, though, Kenny, that we are we are starving for some great new soul music right now? It, it, and I feel like that with, with you releasing your brand new music, it's like you're coming into this moment at the right time. And and because we, we're, we're missing that moment that we can say, yes, my God, some great R&B from 2024. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I'm glad I'm, you know, it, it, it's really it started out as a pop country vibe. Really? But I started, uh, yeah, I started to uh, get back all the uh, the masters that were cut in Nashville for me, but I didn't plan on putting my voice on it. But now there's a number of songs that are very, really strong songs, and now I've added to those they're more to the pop end, but I've added more. I've added a, um, how could you say, spiritual, heartfelt music, um, uh, inspirational music. Mm-hmm. You think I'm working on? But it's always one thing with me. It starts with a song. It doesn't start with a beat. Doesn't start with a groove. It starts with a concept in my head, and a song. Um, Every song that became a hit was in my head as a title. That's how that happened. Yeah, yeah. But but see, I love that process because I, I, I pinned out a song called The Saddest Song, The Saddest Love Song I Ever Had to Write, and it became a book more than a song. I mean, I love it when things like that hit you as a creative mind, and all of a sudden, just plant the dang thing and let it grow. You know, that's from my song, Love's Grown Deep. Let us plant the seed and watch it grow. <laughs> Remember Love's Grown Deep? Yes, I do. In fact, you know what? You, let me tell you the reason why I love that song. Because I love the jazziness in the background. I think that it was one of the very first times that I sat down and really started believing and, and loving the sound of jazz. Yeah, it, it was a beautiful record. And uh, it gained me. It got me the... Uh, Top Singles Artist of the Year in Billboard for 77. So I was happy. And, and, and it stood out in 77 because everything in 77 was thump, 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 disco beat. But you came in there with that sound and it's like, oh, well, this is unique. This, this, I, I can call this my own. Oh, I'm glad you did. <laughs> so um, it's been a journey and I still do it all I ever did. I never had any other job other than writing songs. I don't know how that happened. I guess I got extremely lucky. And you remember the guy, I remember Mike Curb? Uh, Curb Records? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He signed me when I was uh, almost 18 as a writer-singer. And 
he start, I started to get records out with Toby Gray, Rapsford, the Osmonds, and that's what really started me going forward and forward with writing and writing and writing. And then it all seemed to break loose. Uh, I had uh, four records on the chart. I had, num- I had number one and number two in Billboard. <laughs> uh, Lady Marmalade, My Eyes Adore You, and they switched spent some time on the around and then I had top 10 I had uh, get dancing and uh, then I had uh, oh I did an R&D hit called swing your daddy by or Jimmy Gilstrap. Do you remember that? No, I don't, but I'll tell you what I'm right. I'm taking down a lot of notes because I'm going to be hitting iHeartRadio to be looking up these songs. And, <clears throat> swing your daddy went to number 2. My uh, God. On the BBC, and it went top ten here. And it went swing your daddy, boop, pop, booty. And then I had I had another record. Uh, God, I forgot. Yeah, it was called uh, Up in Love. And it was on Casablanca Records. Oh. But I tell you, you should listen to a song on my third album Night Miracle on Casablanca and it's it's a song called You're So Beautiful Tonight and that came out in 1982 and that song has legs like constant people writing me telling me this is a great song this is a great song you should try to find that it's on you can go to YouTube and You're So Beautiful Tonight Kenny Nome and I think it's a beautiful song. It really is. It's, it's, to me, it sounds like one of those songs that you know started right there at the beginning of what they called adult contemporary music, and it was in that transition period. And, man, to re-release that song, I mean, my God, that would be, that'd be an awesome thing in this modern age. Well, yeah. It's a love song, but it's, uh, you know, a, enough tempo love song, but it's got just so much beauty to it. Yeah. Uh, you can go on YouTube. You, you should find that and play it. You will, you will love it. I and love then I have another song called Connect the Dot, uh, which was, I thought, another I Like Dreaming, but uh, it was not released as a single, which I think it should have been. Where we can find more is on your website. Where can we go to find that? Well, you can go to uh, uh, the song album, A Night Miracle. You can go to, uh, you can get... Uh, us in love and you're so beautiful tonight and then you can get uh, a, a song between a second album which has some beautiful music on it and it has that song connect the dot it's almost like a postcard it's so beautiful <laughs> um, uh, and uh, you know the uh, the first album which is out now apparently uh, there's people are streaming it with, with uh, I Like Gaming and Love's Grown Deep. Yep. Uh, and that's... I'm, I'm excited about getting some of these new songs going because uh, they're really, pound for pound, they're just as good as any of the earlier songs I've written. So... Wow. Well, Kenny, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I look forward to it. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? (laughs) Okay, thank you.